Hi, this is the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group. It's the 4th of June, 2020. Welcome everyone. Um, let's go ahead. I'm gonna share my screen and let's look at the agenda to be sure that we've got all the topics we want to cover. So talking about open action items, uh, then Windows Service Wrapper for uh, support, Windows, Windows Server Wrapper support for YAML parsing. Uh, Windows support policy, Oleg. Then I'll give a brief summary of the Git plugin performance Google Summer of Code project that um, Risham is working on. And if Sladen happens to join us, we'll do custom Jenkins build service project. I can talk to Docker images and Alpine briefly as a discussion topic. Any other topics you need to add to the agenda? I don't think so. Okay. So on the action items, the we are using the CDF Zoom account now. So that's in progress, but needs a needs a pull request to show to place the uh, new URL into the calendar. Mm, so calendar is not uh, managed by pull requests. It's managed oh. uh, just by Google Calendar. Okay, so the. Google Calendar updated. I thought I had the, oh good, I will. Yeah, so maybe you're talking about uh, Jenkins event calendar, uh, but the, uh, to be honest, I'm going to just nuke that and replace it by embedded calendar. Oh, just okay. maintaining that on uh, Jenkins website. Uh, yeah. So are you okay if I leave yeah. it as is in the? Yep, uh, so if you uh, reference a link directly from the platform seek page, it makes sense to update that. Uh, but uh, not uh, for the recurring events, I will just run the movies for you. Great, okay. You are all in the platform, in the platform page, if already there. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's already there because I think I had intentionally not included it there. Uh, so that we didn't have it exposed that publicly. I've still got the open action item on a JEP for Docker operating system support that continues. A uh, Windows support policy. Um, yeah, so Windows support policy itself is done. We'll talk about it later. There are some downstream action items for integrating changes, etc. But yeah, we can safely claim that uh, this action item is finally done. Excellent. And and it's merged, everything set. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, I still have the action item to review the Docker build rework PR. Um, Alex and I were discussing it in addition in the context of Docker images and Alpine. And so we'll talk about that later in this meeting as well. Okay. Windows Server Wrapper support for YAML. Budika, would you like to give us a summary? Even just verbal is great, a brief summary of where things are and I'll take notes. Okay, sure. Okay, uh, actually what I'm doing is, uh, so uh, previously Windows uh, Service Wrapper is support for uh, XML and uh, what I'm doing in uh, uh, NGSOC 2020 is uh, update uh, Windows Service Wrapper for uh, YAML support, actually the configurations. Uh, uh, will be uh, feeded with the YAML file and uh, 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 at the moment what I'm doing is uh, actually uh, I uh, create a PR with a prototype uh, with YAML support and uh, I'm waiting for uh, review for like and uh, to continue with that and uh, and uh, in the project uh, also I'm going to do some uh, documentations uh, related to uh, sorry, uh, Windows Service Wrapper and uh, what I'm doing with uh, YAML supporting uh, task. And um, uh, I'm sorry, but I don't know talk about uh, core things, but I'm still getting used to uh, using to uh, Windows Service Wrapper. So, uh, so yeah, those are the things I'm going to uh, do in the GSOC meeting actually. And uh, yeah, that's all. I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for the update. 
So okay. yeah, maybe it also was mentioned that there is standing pull request for XSD schema uh, for XML configurations. Because yeah, right now Jenkins project uses uh, XML. So while well, YAML configuration is uh, in progress, uh, we could already get some benefits from this project once the scheme is landed. So Oleg, I'm not sure I captured that. So the there's a pull request with the XML schema definition as well? Yeah, XSD. Oh, okay. But the XSD is just a standard for XML. Great. Okay. Thank you. Excellent, Budica. Thanks very much. Okay. Anything else on Windows Service Wrapper? Yeah. One thing which we will talk about uh, later, uh, we will be updating Windows Service Wrapper versions in the Jenkins core. Uh, so right now we use version uh, 2.7 uh, which, or even 2.5, which is a bit old. And uh, there are new versions and these new versions include uh, particular useful features. For example, permission uh, elevation uh, when you install the service. So you won't longer need to run uh, agent GR as administrator in order to be able to install this Windows service. Uh, so yeah, these changes uh, will be landing soon. Uh, we're just uh, waiting for Windows support policy because uh, it requires some changes to be landed. But yeah, this is what we will talk about later. Well, that's great because I had somebody who was asking me personally, hey, how is the, how is the install as an administrator? So this will improve the experience for users as, mm -hmm. they, as they attempt to install the agent process as a service? Yeah. Yeah, there are many other changes, but yeah, I would say that this is uh, the biggest one. I wanted to actually land it uh, last week due to the uh, UNQ IUX hack test. But we had some delay in uh, Windows support policy discussions. So finally I didn't. Excellent, That that is really encouraging. So is that one then that Boudicca would end up creating a, a a blog post on or a docs page change on it or is that something that would come from the Jenkins core team when when it's used? I guess it would come from uh, Jenkins core team because it's not really related to Boudicca's project. It's basically a result of uh, a lot of changes by next term over the past few months. Some of these changes have been already integrated, some still need to be integrated. Uh, but yeah, once we get new version, then uh, the next releases will also include changes by Bodica. So I think that, uh, uh, yeah, so it's just a foundation work, but it really provides uh, value to Jenkins users as is. I don't think there will be new documentation, but yeah, maybe some updates because we already have documentation. This documentation is just flawed, so it may, might be cleaned up and simplified. Good, okay, that's great. Wonderful, thank you. Oleg, do you want to take a Windows support policy? So, Quick update, we already had a discussion um, in the last SIG meeting about that. Uh, what has changed? So the f firstly, uh, the policy was merged yesterday. So if you go to the Jenkins IO website now, you can find it there. Um, it was a result of the yesterday's uh, governance meeting where we approved some changes. So the notable change is that uh, we moved uh, Windows 10 support from level one to level two, because right now we don't have means uh, for testing of that. So Alex Earl is looking uh, into uh, test automation, but yeah, uh, for the time being, we agreed that it would be tier, uh, tier two, and well, I think that everybody is okay with that. Um, so what it uh, brings, firstly, now we have an explicit list of versions we actually support, so we can uh, 
Um, uh, now we know uh, which uh, Windows API versions we support, which is important for some of the projects. Uh, let's say uh, yeah, we include uh, uh, GNA, we include GNR uh, in our libraries, and uh, we have been already hit by updating and suffering from Win API versions on all the platforms. Uh, and pretty much the same for .NET, because right now, uh, so what I was about talking is that we bundle um, Windows Service Wrapper for .NET Framework 2, and the .NET Framework 2 is basically very old, and it became a maintenance burden, and all, not all features are uh, included. So uh, this new policy increases minimal support, minimum support version uh, to .NET Framework 4, and at the same time, if you uh, need to use uh, Windows services, basically Windows services is the only component uh, dependent on the .NET, you um, can use uh, uh, .NET Core versions we also distribute in Windows service wrapper. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, for example, uh, the YAML library uh, Budik is working on, yeah, again, uh, it has very limited support for .NET 2, so uh, application to .NET 4 will help us to also enable YAML support. Mm -hmm. Great, that is that is wonderful news. Yeah, so YAML library uh, doesn't it, need .NET 4, it can actually run with .NET 2, but there is a lot of limitations. So .NET is organized slightly different from Java, so if you want in Java, you can get the same, but yeah, there are restrictions work differently there. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and .NET, is .NET 2 even maintained by Microsoft anymore? I mean, .NET 4 no. certainly is. No, so, it's not. Okay. .NET 4 is, uh, .NET 4 is also obsolete. Oh, also, okay. so. Yeah, so the choice of .NET 4 basically comes from a minimal viable option, let's say Windows 7. Um, but yeah, we can uh, bump it further later. So it's just temporary state. Most likely I will be suggesting to go to .NET uh, 4.5 um, in a few months. Oh, okay, so when previously when it was saying you were saying .NET four that was four dot zero or some yeah four dot zero oh, I see and thank you yeah so it's a .NET framework uh, to be specific because yeah .NET Core and .NET Framework have different versioning ah uh -huh. yeah hmm. yeah so yeah this is a minor thing but uh, at least it should improve our uh, um, options to improve Windows Service Wrapper even further. So Windows Service Wrapper already provides distributions for modern .NET versions, uh, but the yeah, .NET uh, Framework 2 becomes a maintenance overhead there. Okay, so the, so dot, for instance, .NET 4.5 already has a WinSW package available for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the latest version right now is 4.6.1. Uh, for which uh, packages are provided. We can uh, provide newer versions. We can uh, we also provide .NET Core versions. Uh, so uh, basically uh, the packaging just defines uh, the minimum uh, required version of .NET. Uh, and for example, in uh, Jenkins, we have a lot of hugs to get uh, .NET uh, Framework 2 versions running on uh, modern .NET uh, versions. And there is already a pull request from next turn, which basically removes these hugs. So it will uh, become a bit simpler and feels more testable. So we yeah, will spend some time uh, this month to finalize these changes because they are long overdue. Anything else on Windows support policy? Or Boudica, any questions from you to Oleg on Windows support policy? Uh, actually, I'm good. 
Okay. Uh, I think, uh, okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you. So next topic, brief summary on Git plugin performance GSOC project. So the um, Rishab has provided a uh, benchmark pull request uh, and he's actually revised it several times working through the process of bringing JMH benchmark execution onto ci.jenkins.io so that we can use the, gives us the benefit of having access eventually to uh, S390X, uh, PowerPC64, AMD64 Linux, and Windows Linux, or Windows uh, AMD64. And yeah, potentially. So the problem with that is that uh, CI Jenkins IO is still not designed uh, for benchmarking. Uh, we had this discussion last year as a part of JSOC, as a part of platform seek meetings. Uh, but yeah, on demand provisioning of uh, virtual machines and all, um, containers. It's not exactly how you do performance testing if you want to get metrics. So yeah, if you improve uh, performance uh, by 10 times, it's one story. But if you improve it uh, by 5%, then uh, our current infrastructure isn't able uh, to reliably capture that. And, and that I think right now, given that this is the initial exercises are actually comparative checks mm -hmm. between CLI Git and JGit, I think the risk is relatively low there. Um, the yeah. agreed wholeheartedly. Yeah, there is no risk. Uh, you just shouldn't use uh, these metrics as absolute values. Related right. to ones, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so the the risk is benchmark comparisons between between runs are ultimately unpredictable because we're getting on demand provisioning. Now, one one of the things Oleg that we I did see is that the mm -hmm. the pipeline library seems to use a resource lock which attempts to prevent more than one uh, more than one performance benchmark from running at a time, as though it were locking onto specific class of hardware i haven't investigated yeah. yet though so yeah the... so there is a library method and there is a blog post from uh, abude uh, he was a gsoc student in 2019 working on the performance portal strategy plugin so pipeline library step uses high mem machines so basically the machines we are using for acceptance test harness and yet yeah, these machines uh, i believe they are still provisioned uh, as virtual machines, most likely still on Asia. Uh, still, uh, these machines are not that predictable in terms of performance, in terms of, uh, especially if it comes to network overheads. So, but yeah, it's definitely better than running on ACI. Yeah, okay, and that understood there, okay, so. Um, yeah. uh, between runs between um, jobs, yeah, they get a different machine. Mm -hmm. yeah. So one of the, one of the techniques we've also been using has been to um, run the same benchmarks on Mark CI server, uh, which has fixed hardware, but it's ancient fixed but old hardware. So it tells us something different. The other is that he's running his on, uh, Rishab is running on his uh, Mac. So we're, we're seeing interesting samples and doing, being able to cross check between various configurations to say, hey, is it consistent that on small repositories, JGit is in fact faster than CLI Git? And is it consistent that on very large repositories, CLI Git is dramatically faster than JGit. So those Until kinds of comparisons. Until you run out of memory. What's that? Until you run out of memory. Because JGit is much more resource consuming than Git. Right, well, even, even ignoring the, the resource consumption, we've seen that with large repositories, command line Git wins every time. 
even even if JGit has lots of memory available, it's still fundamentally slower than command line git is. Command line git seems to to uh, somewhere between the 10 megabyte repository and the 90 megabyte repository, JGit loses the race. Yeah, maybe. Uh, JGit may have some advantages for cases where you cannot use a command line git. Uh, for example, if you want to fetch a particular file uh, using git, then uh, with JGit you have opportunities to shortcut particular uh, bits in order to, for example, query um, the Jenkins file from a repository. But yeah, in the most cases, I think you should just use uh, proper provisioners like GitHub branch source or whatever. You should do it uh, without any JGit magic. Right. The the benefit there is get the branch sources can then use the REST API. They can they can make direct requests to a single file. Yeah. So that continues. Um, the we also have two or three pull requests pending. Several pull requests uh, already submitted. Uh, one is for the redundant fetch removal. Uh, one is for is to refine and improve the benchmarks. So one thing I have to drop. Um, I just uh, got an emergency meeting request. Okay. So yeah, sorry for the late notice. Um, and yeah, I think that next time we uh, uh, should just have a full meeting with more participants. So, yeah. Thanks, Oleg. See you later. Bye. Bye. So last topic was Docker Images and Alpine. And there, Alex Earl, um, the maintainers of the Alpine Images, Alex Earl, myself, and, oh, how awkward. And one other person met last, oh, and Oleg met last week and discussed how do we approach the, the Alpine Images right now? We need to update the Java on Alpine because it's currently JDK 8 update 212. Uh, it's therefore several, several major revisions behind, or several revisions behind the current, the current Java 8 update 252. That is in progress. Uh, Alex has submitted a pull request and the uh, the change really will have to use adopt out of open JDK instead of using JDK, the open JDK bundle with Alpine because Alpine no longer provides um, JDK updates beyond 212 for Alpine 3.9. So that, that part of that transition will be adopting adopt open JDK it's also expected that we will eventually uh, update our Alpine base operating system version to 3.11 or newer. Those were the items that we had for our meeting today. Uh, Boudica, unless you have others, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording and close the meeting. Okay, okay, I'm cool. Thanks very much. Thank you for joining. Okay, thank you.